<laughs> look at you. We're just, we're gonna one of these days. I'm gonna be seeing Vaughn with all the fancy stuff for this podcast, and I'll well, be like, I was there at the beginning. I hope so. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I really appreciate you uh, taking time to talk to me. Oh, I love it. I love to talk. Talking is my favorite. I'm I know, sorry. and that's why you're the perfect <laughs> podcast guest. <laughs> Right? You just don't even have to talk. I will talk the whole time. <laughs> let, let me. Well, how's everything going? It's been a while since I talked to you. Yeah, it, it has been a really long time. Um, just been busy, you know, kid stuff and uh, doing a lot of kid stuff. But, you know, my, my youngest daughter is going to be leaving uh, the house in August, moving to college. So we'll have two college age children. So I'm just trying to maximize the time we have left with them and you know, i know they're both uh, athletes you know you're a dad you, you well know. i know i uh my daughter uh got into nursing school so she's in yeah. nursing school now but i was going to ask you about your girls because you, you seem to um have some pretty high performing children yeah. that are <laughs> me and my husband we just i don't know got some good genes or something i guess um you know my oldest daughter plays college basketball and the youngest plays, or she will be running track and cross country in college for South Alabama Division I program in Mobile. They're in the Sunbelt Conference. And my oldest daughter is actually, oh my gosh, this is so, just, uh, it's just makes you sick. Um, they, for the fourth time in their program history, went to their conference tournament final last week. They played in every round. So they played, I think, five games in five, six days, five games in six days, I think is what it was. They had, and you know, it's, it's single elimination. If you right. lose out, so they won six or they won five games in a row to go to the sixth game. I, I believe that's what it is. It's either four or five or five and six. And they lost their conference final by one point. Oh in, no. In the final couple of minutes of, of the game. Uh, just very, very disheartening. But the good news is, you know, they're, they were in uncharted territory, um, you know, getting that close to that really for the last three, what, 1980 to, I still think 1980 is like 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> so this is like in 40, 30 or 40 years, uh, you know, their team, their school hasn't been there. And, um, so it's really, really exciting for them to go and they earned a spot in the WNIT, which is the, it's the losers conference or the losers bracket, the losers tournament. I mean, you know, the winners move on to the NCAA. Um, and then obviously in the higher, the SEC might have several people go to the NCAA tournament, you know, like in the men's side, I think Mississippi State and Ole Miss on the men's side actually made it to the NCAA tournament um, based on their rankings nationally. But when you're in these um, smaller Division I uh, conferences like the Sun Belt, only the winner moves forward to the NCAA. So they lost to um, Euler and Little Rock. But the NIT is something they've never done before. So it's a really big deal, and uh, we're very excited. And then the younger one tracks, you know, she's in track season right now, so I'm still keeping up with that. We have four track meets this week. Um, so I was in Hattiesburg Monday. Oh, no, is, what is today, Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, so you are in Gulf Shores. I was in Gulf Shores on Saturday, and you were just in Gulf Shores. I was. Yeah, so we were in Gulf Shores on Saturday, and then we were in Hattiesburg on Monday, and then we're going to Long Beach on Thursday, and then we're going to New Orleans on Friday and Saturday for track. Wow. It's just too much. It's too much, but I wouldn't trade it. I, I, oh, no, I can. I, I, I wouldn't either if I were you. What? How is your gym doing, and what? how, how does oh, that work? Oh, how yeah. does that work yeah. while you're yeah. gone? <laughs> like, you know, like. Well, it, it works. Um, we've had, I've been around for a while with the, the gym. So we opened right. in 2013 and back in the, well, actually I started in my backyard and with a boot camp. Um, and then we moved to a public park and then we moved to a storage unit with no running water. And we had a porta potty for a bathroom for about three years. And, um, after that, we moved to this bigger facility. So we're kind of in a big place now with offices. I actually have a full-time coach on staff with me. And then I have six, we have seven total coaches. 
um, but we have ones deployed right now. So we have a lot of help and my coaches have been with me for a long time. I mean, my full-time coach has been with me since 2013 as a member. She was in my very first on-ramp class ever, my first month of business. So she's been around, she knows everybody, she knows the drill. Um, so they help me a lot in keeping this ship afloat. I couldn't do what I do without the great coaches uh, that we have. And we're like a family and we're, we're almost like brothers and sisters. We've been together for so long. All my coaches have been with me for a really long time. So they help. Well, what, what is your, what is your daily routine like? I, I I usually ask that later in the podcast, but since we're on the subject of running the gym, like what? Well, it, I guess it just depends the time of the year because, you know, I'm also a cross country coach. Right. I am. I was voluntold. I was going to assist with track. So, and I also am the vice president of, or I'm the president of the booster club for the basketball program. And I'm the basketball program strength and conditioning coach. We just had the basketball team in here yesterday doing in body scans. So the day is never the same. Uh, you know, sometimes I might wake up at four and coach the 5 a.m. and the 6 a.m. class. And I do PT first to get people into the gym. So I might have a 7 a.m. Um, personal training client. And then I sit and try to decompress for a little bit and then do whatever. If the open's happening, that's like, and you know, the open's going on right now. So, and I'm on a team and I'm so extra. <laughs> I mean, I'm. <laughs> We have so I handmade. Oh my gosh, I have to show you this. And I know this is so off topic. And we're, no, no, it's fine. Um, but if you can see these little keychains, oh. yeah. Okay, so I handmade every person. We have almost forty people doing the open on a team. We do an intramural here, so I handmade and stamped. Not just I stamped bandit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, and so because last week's theme was um. Uh, shamrock you know st patrick's day so our team came up with the theme of lucky penny and the shamrocks we were a rock band and uh lucky penny was our main singer our lead singer and she was dressed up in a mardi gras costume of a, of a mardi gras maid it was so extra and then i was dressed up in a green wig and i look like a punk rock leprechaun and then so after we made all these friday me and another coach who was also dressed up like a punk rock leprechaun we went to all the people's works and delivered them their lucky penny, lucky charm to help them through 19.4. That's so awesome. Surprised, yeah, so we surprised them all at work because, you know, we're trying to win the team spirit, which this is, of course, team spirit gets 10 points toward their team. My team's name is Black Magic, and which I didn't pick that name, but we're going with it. Uh, we're trying to win the 10 points for every week to win the team spirit. But it's very competitive because like every team has come up with like amazing things. Like this week we're doing um, the Oscar awards. It's actually the Bandy awards. So I just sent invitations to all and nominations to all the people who are playing that they are nominated for a Bandy award and it's got glitter in it. And they're going to be so pissed because when they open up their nomination envelope, they're, they're going to get glittered. And <laughs> so we're going to have a lot of happy gym members here. So we ended, we did that today and we actually are going to have red carpets, stars. We're going to dress up like, um, you know, the Grammys. We're actually going to do some videos into the gym about um who's nominated we're gonna be dressed up with a podium and a seat. oh my gosh Vaughn, i'm so extra when i tell you i'm extra I'm that's so awesome i love it so, but the members love it so the other team they came up with an idea this week and they might steal our thunder they're doing bandits got talent so we've got like in our public group right now all the members are like showing off their weird talents. Like uh, Sam, one of my coaches, she can tie a cherry stem with her tongue. So she did that. <laughs> Another one showed herself hula hooping badly. Um, one of them made a cup of coffee. That was her talent with a Keurig. I was like, super not a good talent, but she was dancing the whole time she was making it. So they're trying to win this contest for the spirit points. But I did tell my coaches, I was like, y'all know, 
I would do this spirit competition without the points. I don't even care about these stupid points. I just want everybody to have a really good time. Just for fun, yeah. Just for fun. It's for the fun of it. So, yeah, that's our typical day today. I did go, um, I had to go check out some photograph sites for my daughter's senior photos. So I went and found some places we could photo for that. And I've got to validate the open scores. And then I had a personal intro come in at 5 o'clock. And then... Um, what else? I'm trying to read this article about Lazarus Lake in this. Oh yeah. 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 I had my, it's a Red Bull magazine that somehow I get for free to the gym. And then, um, Oh, I got my truck washed today and then oh, by classy chassis, you know, I don't do that myself cause I sat and worked while they washed my truck for me. And then, um, I'm on the podcast with you and then I'm going to go home and make supper and I'm yeah. going to wake up at 4am and do it all again. There you go. On a, on a CrossFit gym. <laughs> they all have no idea. They have no idea what it what it is. You know. You well, know. I do know, but I have a one question about the intramural uh-huh. thing you were doing. Are they? Are did your people register for the open officially, or are you just doing this off the? Yeah. So they're t- one of two things. They don't have to register for the open officially, but. If they do, they give their team 10 points. Oh, gotcha. If they take the judges course, they give their team 20 points. And this is what we're going to do next year. And I hope none of my people watch this because I'm manipul- <laughs> I manipulate them. Um, we are going to give them points for judging the open Friday night lights. Because, you know, we have, we struggle with getting people to judge because we run like heats. Friday night starts mm-hmm. at 430 and it usually around seven or so um so we're always like hey who can judge who can judge and everybody wants to hang out and eat the food and because you know it's the gym looks like party city threw up in here that's how it's there's just so much stuff everywhere and so they're all wanting to hang out and talk around the food and stuff and while other people are trying to work out so we're going to give points next year to people who judge hoping that to encourage them more people to to come and judge so so they don't have to do the open but if they do some of them sign up for it just to give their team the points and they don't ever log a score. Mm-hmm. They just do it. Uh, last week I forgot to log my score. So now I'm out of the running on the lift heavy run log. Oh no. Yeah. Cause I forgot to log it in all my business. I completely forgot to log my score, which I did it scaled anyways. And I did everything else RX, but that's all right. I think I still would have been ranked. Um, I don't, I can't remember how that works. You know, I don't really care about that anymore. I, I don't either. I used to be really big into it because obviously I was trying to go to regionals and it was really important to me, right. but I, I just anymore because I've been doing the open since 2011. Me too. I've yeah. Done it every year. I really have enjoyed the, the process, but my, my scores are dramatically decreasing. You know, the, the more successful your gym is, the, the lower your ranking on the open. I, I can see that for sure. Well, the, what is your, do you, uh, here's a random question that may, I, I just thought of. Are you, what's the difference between 2011 and now? Are you, I don't want this to come off across yeah, yeah. The, the wrong way, but like, are you as interested in CrossFit as you were in 2011? Uh, um, in 2011, I wanted to go to the CrossFit Games. And I was, right. I was 61st place and you had to be 60th in the region to go to the regionals. In 2012, I was 48th place. So I did get to go to regionals in 2012. 2013, I broke my hand, so I got out. I broke my hand after the second week, walking on my hands for no reason, just walking on them to have fun, and I broke my hand. So right out. when you right when you opened your gym, maybe yeah, exactly. in 2013. Yeah. I broke my foot when I opened my gym in 2014. <laughs> we're so. like, yeah, we're like right there. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I used to care a lot about it because I was really at a high level competing, and I was trying. To, you know, my goal in 2009. I wanted to go to the CrossFit Games because I watched um, that documentary about that they did over the games. It's like on the journal site. It's like um, Savan did this 18 piece thing. You know, we had Carrie Kepler on there. Jeremy Teal was on there. Mm -hmm. Tanya Wagner was on it. Miko was in it. All these OG, you know, CrossFitters were in it. And I watched that. So I was like, oh my gosh, because I've done CrossFit actually before that. And I didn't know it was competitive. I mean, you know, it was always competitive to an extent, but it was never that the fact of going to go, go somewhere to physically compete against strangers you've never competed against before. Um, so when I saw that, then I was like, oh my gosh, I've been missing this my whole life. I mean, cause mm-hmm. I like to compete, I'm very competitive. And um, so that's when I dedicated myself to that. And then silly me, 
I thought, oh, I want to compete in CrossFit. I need to open a gym so I can work out all day. That was the worst decision. <laughs> So, um, you know, now it's like, you know, you're kind of just struggling trying to keep this competitive stuff on. And then here come your kids who want to be athletes, college athletes, and that you can only have one athlete, one high caliber athlete in your house at a time <laughs> and not support three high caliber athletes because their schedules are just ridiculous. You know, I spent every summer traveling with my kids for recruiting and tournaments and strength and conditioning and money and everything else to get them to their level. So I've just kind of faded back. So like where we're going with this is that the open anymore, you know, it's just kind of depressing because I've been there, done that and I'm not getting better. You know, 16.2 was much better for me than 19.2. You know, back in the day, I could do all the wads a lot better and a lot faster. And it's just kind of sickening to watch it, to look at it. And <laughs> like, I'm just in such, I'm not in bad shape though. I mean, you know, I ran the Barkley. I'm not. Right. In, yeah. I, I completed the Barkley. So not the Barkley marathon, the Barkley fall classic. Fall classic. Yeah. I can, I completed that. So it's not like I'm a slouch, but I'm definitely not what Janice was of 2013. Yeah. Well, let's talk, look, since you brought up Barkley, let's talk, let's talk about running for a little bit. Oh yeah. I love to run. Um, how was the, how was the Barkley? Oh my gosh. That was, that was a really great experience. It was, it was ranked right up there with, um, I don't know if you know about these things that you used to do called the cease to iron, which I'm going to go back. To yeah. Right. 20 in California. Yeah. Okay. So that was right up there with that. And, and it was very difficult. And I wasn't in as good a shape as I should have been to do the Barkley. You know, Mike McElroy is my coach. Um, yes. I want to talk about that for sure. Uh, yeah. Amazing. So he prepared me for the Sisu and the Broken Skull Challenge and all that back in 2015 when I was still in good shape. And um, so he helped me to go to the Barkley. But when we had our coaching call, um, you know, last year sometime, he said, you know, you only have 20% compliance of your training. <laughs> uh, Oops. You know, I was like, oops, but you know, I have a great base and I have a great foundation. So the Barkley was a lot harder for me than I feel like it could have been or than it should have been if I had been a little more regimented and able to stick to my training like I could. Now I did kind of focus my training leading up July, August. I really tried my best to at least get my runs in. I didn't really do a lot of my strength as much as I could have, but you know, Vaughn, when I run, I'm really not doing like when I trained for the Barkley, I, I ran no more than like six to seven miles at a time. I never did long, long runs. Um, I would do like 60 minutes of things. And, you know, I still finished. I finished in 12 minutes and four or 12 minutes. Oh, that'd be nice. 12 hours and 49 minutes was my time. And you have 13 hours and 20 minutes to complete it. Is it, uh, is it, how far is it? Well, they say it's 31 miles, but some guy that I know um, who remains nameless um, brought some sort of tracking device. You're not supposed to bring. Oh, you're not. Okay. You're not supposed to have mileage or headphones or anything like that um, there. You know, you've got about 400 people running with you. And so those people are your radio. Um, but he tracked it. As, it said 41 miles on his. You know, it took me the so rat jaw. Let's talk about rat jaw for a yeah. second. The, the legendary thing um it's after the prison so when you get to the prison which is really cool in itself and you know we went over the prison wall this was really cool we get over the prison wall i'm running with this guy named ryan that i met um just a random guy from chattanooga who now i know his whole life story and he does triathlons and he's just there because his girlfriend was there and she was ahead of us and she's better than him so anyways me and ryan are running and he had just drank a red bull and i was like you probably shouldn't drink that red bull because have you ever had one before you know we've been running for six hours at this point we're hot and it's the middle of the day and he's like, nah, never have one. It's like, okay, we'll see. We get to the wall to climb over the wall because you have to pretend like you're escaping the prison and jump over the wall just like James Earl Ray did whenever he escaped there. Yeah. Um, okay. So on the other side of the wall, punching our bibs, and I'm not even paying attention because I'm delirious, is Jared Campbell, the Jared Campbell, you know, the, the badass Barkley Marathons finisher. He's punching our bibs, and Ryan's like, hey. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, is it really? So I would have just kept on going. Jared Campbell 
punched our bibs so we stopped and take a picture so that was a highlight of of the trip there was to get to see him and it was really nice that he was there punching our bibs for you know all these Barkley fall classic people that are just like you know everyday guys we're just like everyday people wanting to do something really cool well do you do so with the fall classic do you I guess you know do you know where you're going how does it uh, okay. with the I guess with the Barclays you don't know where you're going right no, no. necessarily but how does it work what's the difference so the difference between the two and we'll go back to the rat jaw because that is something that needs to be discussed <laughs> um, the the difference between the two is that the Barkley marathons first of all the timing it happens usually around April Fool's Day um, is when the big one happens and that one is like five loops of the Barkley fall classic the Barkley fall classic is really just one loop okay then they call it like the bonus loop to go out to make it the 50 K you go out and do like a bonus loop. And I don't know if the bonus loop is the same every time, but um, the bonus loop for us was called chimney, chimney top and spice wood. So after you get done with your marathon and you get to this nine hour, it's like a nine hour cutoff. You have to make it to, this is for the vault classic. You can decide, do you want to just finish? because you're done and you've had enough and you're ready to quit and you just want to go get a marathon finish, which is honorable and respectable in a lot of people's um, opinion. Or do you have enough left in you to go out and do this bonus loop called chimney top and spice wood? So, you know, that's probably the biggest difference is that, you know, it's just a one loop ordeal for the Barkley fall classic and there's 400 people running it, you know, and, and the lottery process is kind of a pain in the butt too, to get, cause I'm in the Barkley fall classic lottery right now. Um, I didn't, I didn't get in this year. I wanted to do it again cause I wanted to redeem myself and have a better time of it and be more in shape cause my kids will be gone and I'll have more time to train. Um, but the Barkley marathon, only like 40 people get in. I don't know if you watched right. that doctor. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you have to go through all this rigmarole to try to figure out how to get in. And, you know, there's these fools out there who think that they actually even want to do that. I'm thinking the whole time I'm running the Barkley Fall Classic, there are people that do five laps of this. Yeah, so. One, no so they, we both have, ma like, I have a map, and I believe they have a map in the Barkley Marathon. But what happens in the Barkley Marathon is that you have to know where these books are. And you have right. to. You're on, the, it's on the same trails, but they're different orders. So just like the people that do the Barkley Fall Classic for this year and the fall, they're going to run the same trails that I did in 2018, but they're going to be in a different order. You might have to do rat jaw oh. as earlier in the race rather than in the middle of the race. So it just, everything is always the same area. It's just a different order. You might have to go up meth lab instead of um, primarily down the worst part of the meth lab. So okay. from, what I heard, from what I heard last year, we went down the worst part of meth lab rather than up the worst part of meth lab. So, gotcha. and that meant we had to go up testicle spectacle, you know, with <laughs> another place by this church, which I'm telling you, these, these aid stations at the Barkley fall classic, it's like muses are at these stations just beckoning you to just <laughs> sit down for a minute, brush your feet, relax. You've got plenty of time. You've got 13 hours and 20 minutes. You cannot, if you're like me or where I was in the race, you cannot afford to sit down and rest. There, it's like carnage. It's mass carnage at these rest areas, these um, aid stations, and definitely up rat jaw every 10 20 feet and you can't look up on rat jaw you're doing this you're bear crawling oh. imagine bear crawling for one mile up an incline treadmill for one mile it took me over an hour to go a mile up rat jaw and i only took one break i took one break i passed so many people on rat jaw people were passing me like crazy the rest of the race but on rat jaw you just have to go 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 and there's people laid out over here mostly men <laughs> Mostly men were laid out. And the reason why, though, is because there's so many more men. I think there were only, I would say, maybe 30% of the entrants. I'd have to, I don't know the numbers exactly, but there's really not a lot of women that are signed up into the Barkley Fall Classic. And the same thing happens in the Barkley Marathon. It's mostly men. Laz even has like a running joke, Laz, like I know him. Um, he has a running <laughs> joke. <laughs> we're buddies. We're like this. 
um, that he just doesn't think a woman's ever going to finish the Barkley marathons. I would dispute that. I think the right woman could sign up and do it definitely because finding the books is difficult for the Barkley marathon. We're back to the marathon. If you can follow right back on the marathon where you have to find these books scattered throughout the course. There's 11 books you have to find that correspond to your bib number. And then when you come in, guess what? You have to go back the opposite way that you came. So in the daylight, maybe potentially, because you don't know what time the race starts in the daylight, you might go this way. And then at night you're going to have to turn around and go back the other way. Um, so it's like, you're always going backwards and changing it up and you have 60 hours to do those five loops. Well, um, my experience in running ultras is that, <laughs> that women are way more badass than men. Yeah. Yeah, so sure. I, 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 I would, I think this orienteering part is like, but it's really not super hard to orient uh, from what I've heard. But, you know, usually most ultras are like, okay, here's the trail. You're on this road. Okay, I see what you're saying. On the Barkley, you have to go off the trail. And that's, I think, what trips people up. No pun so, are you, so are you saying that you think men are probably better at that specific? Like if I, if I, if I switch it around, men might be better at, going off script than the women are? I think that men have more career opportunities and more purposes and more hobbies that encourage them to use map orienting skills oh. on the whole. I know okay. women out there that can do it. It's just like running a Spartan race back in the day, early days of Spartan race. If you were a good runner and you could do obstacles, you could do really well at the races. I, mean, I, I don't know if this correlation is even making sense. So it's like these women have to not only be good runners, but they're going to have to be good at orienteering. So back in the day of Spartan race, if you weren't a good, if you were just a runner only and you had to do burpees every time you hit an obstacle, somebody who is maybe an, a 19 minute 5k runner could compete with someone who is a 17 minute 5k runner. So uh -huh. I think that's a okay. Thing like these women have more mental capacity and more pain tolerance but i think they just run themselves out of time because they're not familiar with being outdoors and in the woods i mean it's just common sense i mean we live in mississippi women outdoors are not as common as men outdoors that's very true yeah so i'm not going to say that there's not women that can't be outdoors and comfortably navigate themselves it's mm -hmm. just not as likely there, there's not as many of them. So the same thing happens. Not that many women are going to sign up for the Barkley Marathon. I'm sure he gets out of the applicants. I'm, I don't have numbers, but I'd be curious to see. But out of the thousand that apply for this 40 spots, you know, maybe 100 to 200 are probably women. Most are probably men. So it's like mm -hmm. he just naturally, and you have to have a great resume to even get into that race in the first place. So how many women have a resume that have, you know, bad waters? Because first of all, how many women are even in bad water? You've got to have something like the bad water or you've got to have like the heart, you know, you need to do the Western States and be a top finisher. You need to be a top finisher at Leadville. So it's just like, you've got to find this woman who has that resume of ultras plus the resume of someone who is an outdoors person. And wow. Just because you're a runner doesn't mean you're an outdoors person. Well, I didn't, yeah, I, I, I agree, but I, I, uh, I didn't realize you had to have that quite an impressive resume to get into the oh, race to yes. begin with. I just thought you had to know somebody that that could give you the you know the inside scoop to apply. Happening to the backyard, um, the Bigs backyard. Uh, Y'all were talking about that on the podcast the other day, where you just have to do the loops over and over and over. Yeah. Um, I, I applied for that this year. I mean, the the wait list alone is people I couldn't even touch ever. Like their accomplishments are just really, really um up there. So mm. this is the this is my, my prediction and um for a female and the weather plays a big role. You know, last year, the Barkley marathon, it was very, very cold. It was uh, just unreasonably cold and they really didn't have anyone. I'm, I don't want to say wrong information, but I don't think they had many people even finished past the first lap and very few got onto the second lap. And um, so that really kind of halted the progress of the race because they were dealing with the elements as much as they were with, you know, the uncertainty of the course and being off course and being in the wilderness. Um, if the weather's good, the conditions are right. I think Amelia Boone is someone who could finish. Now she 
is not as comfortable she thinks with orienteering i think she's injured though this year so i don't think she's going to get to go back mm. but she gets to go maybe this is the year i have to she wrote a blog the other day and i didn't get to read it yet but it seemed like she was saying that she couldn't go i think she can because that woman is very very tough and she's a very good runner and she's used to being kind of like out of that element. I don't know if people know this, but she's a death racer. So she okay. has done a lot of really hard things before. Not that, you know, the two are equal, but it is something that gives her a little bit of an edge over someone who comes from a strictly running background. Uh, you know, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but Amelia Boone's actually, she was a really good CrossFitter. She was one of the top in her region. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, back in 2013, 2014, she was she was actually on her regionals team one year of, of her CrossFit in Chicago. Okay. So actually, she's just a very well-rounded um, person. She's more into ultra running now than she has been, um, you know, in her earlier career when she first kind of blew up on the scene. She won the Tough Mudder, I think, in 2011 or 2012, and then she started doing the death races, and she just really made a name for herself for being someone really tough. So I think if she could be healthy, she would have a really good chance under good weather conditions of being someone who could have the grit and have the determination uh, to finish, something like that. After I did the Barkley Fall Classic, I told myself I would never want to do the Barkley Marathons. The Barkley Fall <laughs> Classic was plenty for me, and that's why he has that. He wants people to come and see the Barkley Fall Classic because it lessens the people who want to sign up for the Barkley Marathon. You know, I was going to ask you if you thought, like if you had aspirations of running the, oh. the marathon, would you go do the Fall Classic first? Or, but now that you tell me the qualifications to even get into the, the race to begin with, like, I'm not even sure, like, you would even worry about that. It's tough. Now, he does choose people. I'll tell you something. If you want to get, I, I'm not even going to say this. I'm not going to say how to get in the race. He chooses people based, because you, you don't want to publish, publish that information. It's very secret. Um, right. But he chooses people who he knows. Like, he would choose, he chooses, like, a sacrificial virgin. So he could choose somebody like me that is just, you know, not able to do it. But I think he likes to choose people that think they can actually do it. Right. <laughs> you know, I know, I know, you know, if I signed up for it, I'd be like, wow, can I even just make two laps of this? Would I be able to make it for two laps? Mm -hmm. He likes to choose somebody who is just kind of foolish and thinks that they actually have a chance uh, to complete it as that sacrifice gotcha. virgin. Um, I've had a couple people that I know that have done it. It's, it's really, it's really hard. So, and it's hard to get into, and you really have to build a long resume and get to know Laz in a in an intimate way, because um, he really likes to have people in there, and he will actually have people. If you listen to him talk, he'll say, "I like to let them have chances." You know, I if they didn't get it the first year and they want to come back again, I'll let them have another shot. So he's got something called the wait list. Mm -hmm. And that wait list is full of people that he can kind of pull from. So even just to get on the wait list is a, is a accomplishment in itself. Well, let's talk about Leadville. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm doing that one too. And, and that's in August, right? Yeah, I'm actually going for the marathon too, just to try it. What um, is that? What does that mean? The Leadville marathon. It's in June. Okay. So it is on the same course. Um, I'm, hoping. If not, I just booked all these flights and hotels and everything. Oh no. But the reason I'm going, I want to go in June is to try and see what it will feel like to be at 8,000 feet and run. I have no idea. Okay. Well, hang on a second. So how did you, so you're, you're in Leadville. Yes. You're going to go. How I does, well, tell, tell me how that works. So you just, um, there's like a window of time. I can't remember how long it is. Maybe it starts in December or maybe it starts November. You ha just have to sign up for the lottery and you put in your credit card information. They have their own website. They're not even on ultra sign up. So they, you go to the mm -hmm. Leadville website, sign up for the lottery. And then on January, I think it was it the 14th. No, the 13th, the day before my birthday. Um, they had like a Facebook live event where they published the, the lottery winners, the winners, um, or the unfortunate ones, I guess you might would say. <laughs> um, and I was on the list. Nice. I have not, yeah. I mean, it's the first time I've ever tried it. I wrote a blog in about 20, 
2010, 2011 that I wanted to do Leadville. Um, that was back whenever I was a lot more fit. But um, now I just, I kind of just put my name in it. I was like, you know what? I didn't get into the lottery for, I mean, I didn't get into Barkley Fall Classic. I'm still sitting on the random number generator, hoping I can get a spot, but there's 712 other people sitting there waiting with me. And, you know, it's just like a random pull out of those people for the Barkley. So it's like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get to go to the Barkley Fall Classic again. So I'm just going to sign up for Leadville. And if I get in on the lottery, that meant God meant that I was meant to do the Leadville. That's all right. So, so you you don't. That. You don't have to, there's no qualifying stuff for Leadville or anything? Or did, no, did you have that's to put, why it's really a good one for you. To, I don't know if it's a good one to make your first 100. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll find well, out. But yeah, you just kind of go in there. Well, I, I, that, in. Is this your first 100? Yeah. Oh, you know, that's I like, awesome. I like to do things and regret it later. Do you know what I mean? I like to just sign up for something and be like, well, that was a bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. Wow. Okay. So you're going to go in June and run the marathon, uh -huh. hopefully on the same terrain. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty and, sure. And then the well, race is. Same elevation, so that would be good. Right. And then the race is in August. So what, so let's talk about training. Like you, we talked earlier, we talked earlier about how you're so busy and yeah. um, well, <laughs> McElroy says uh, you're 20% you're compliant. So, <laughs> what, well, so I did tell him this month would be a little bit sketchy. Um, I'm really trying to get that training in. Uh, next month will be better. I am doing my every Saturday workout is a 60 minute, um, you know, do like ski machine and bike and then like bear crawls, loaded carries. I'll do that for 60 minutes on Saturdays. And then I'm supposed to spend time on my feet doing something outside of that too. I'm actually doing the Badlands, the 50 K. Really? Yeah. In April the 20th down here on the Bethel trails. Down mm -hmm. close to my house. And so I'm going to do that. I did the Mississippi 50, the 12th which was good for me to do because I actually did the, um, the Scorpion trail, the 50, the 20, 25 K and Meridian. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a really good race. Okay. It's, it's on the Bonita trails Lake in um, Meridian. Okay. And it's a very well run race. Um, and it's great terrain. It's kind of up and down, very technical, a lot of roots, a lot of rocks, you kind of, a lot of switchbacks, single track. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that one and that one crushed me. Cause I let all my Barkley training go from like September to December. I didn't really do anything. And then I go out and run this 25 K like I had business doing that. Um, and I did it and I hurt for three days afterward. So I ran the Meridian. I'm, I'm sorry, the Laurel Mississippi, yeah, Mississippi, 50. Yeah, yep. Mississippi 50. I did that one um, last or earlier this month. I have to look at my calendar. I actually felt really good afterward. I was back. To, I even didn't even walk funny the next day. So it's like, okay, I'm doing something right to train up for this um, hundred miler. Cause you know, I just, I'm a natural runner on a been run. I was a high school runner and running has always been probably the best thing I could do um, in terms of like when I was in CrossFit, I was always the running. I just picked up to it pretty naturally. So I felt pretty good after the race. I was slow as molasses, but I'm training to run a 100 mile race. So, and what I felt like when I finished that was that I could, I could have gone longer. So, and that was really helped me have some confidence that at least I'm kind of on the right, right track a little bit. We'll see how this 50 K feels. <laughs> I'm supposed to do a 50 miler in May. And then in June, I'm going to do that marathon and I'm supposed to do like some back to back stuff too. Uh, you know, Mike's plugged in with OPEX. I don't right. know. With James Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. But um, the programming, I, I mean, I, I want to give him a plug. I mean, Mike is great. He's a, he's just a great Oh, he coach. is. Oh, my gosh. He's a fantastic coach. I'm a huge fan of his. I think I mean, everything he's ever done for me has just been perfect. And one of my favorite things about him is that, and I've really translated this into my gym, is that it doesn't have to hurt to work. Yeah. Like, you don't have to go out and do these um, ball break in workouts for you to be fit and to be in shape to accomplish your goals. And he listens to me. And when I have, um, concerns or when I have problems or, or whatever, um, he always listens and he, he makes adjustments and I don't know, he's just perfect. It's, I think everyone should have a coach, especially if you're going to sign up and do stupid things like I do all the time. <laughs> 
you really need that person to help you. Cause it's like, I've actually relied on him. I'm like, Mike, is it a stupid thing for me to, to do this? And he's like, well, probably. <laughs> well, so does he, does he, everything you do fitness wise, it comes from him. Yes. yes. Okay. So well, tell, wh- uh, what is, what does a week look like of training? Well, it changes depending on what I'm doing. Um, so for this hundred miler, it does look a little bit different than the Barkley. Um, right now we're just working on, um, I guess, base cardio development, uh, Mondays. I still do, um, some lifting, he knows I'm doing the open, so I might do some clean sometimes or whatever, but like I'll do clean pulls and then I do a lot of accessory stuff like bench pressing and climb bench, dumbbell rows. I've been doing this new squat. I can't remember the name of it. You put your feet real close together and you've got your feet elevated. Oh my gosh, it kills my quads. I can't remember the name of those squats that I'm doing. You put a barbell on your back. I can barely do 45 pounds and you do this weird. Are you standing like on a, on a yeah. thin, yeah. like an elevated thing? Yeah, you put, I have my heels on a 45 pound plate. Okay. Okay. Totally sketchy. But you know, on the video, video it shows I'm on like one of those stretching platforms that you stretch your calves and your soleus on at the PT office. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, redneck engineering around here. I just put my feet on a 45 pound plate. Gotcha. Barbell on me. I am the owner. So I do accept the liability of me breaking my ankle and falling off of it. Um, but see, so yeah, you just put your feet together and do a squat. He makes me do a set of those. And then I'll do like a 20 minute wad um, on Mondays. And that has like a weight vest. So I'll do like hangs, um, biking. I'm doing a lot of assault biking, a lot of ski, ski machine. I have a skier here. Tuesday is just a run, 5k run easy. Uh, Wednesday is um, usually just more, more strength and conditioning. And then like a 30 minute with some running in it. And then Thursday is Hills. And then Friday is the open for now. Um, he'll probably change that, you know, ne- after next week, after this week, I won't do the open anymore. I'll probably, who knows what I'll do. And then Saturdays are always that 60 minute and it works up. So I started with 30 minutes and then mm-hmm. we did 35. Then I did 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. He's had me do like 90 minute AMRAPs before though. And they're so miserable. Is, are you talking about, so in my head, I was thinking you're talking about on the weekend, you, that 60 minutes would be a run. Is sometimes, it, sometimes. it could be a run or it could be a 90 minute something else. Yeah. So I did, I guess when I went and ran at the Mississippi 50, that was my run was the long gotcha. that day. And then like last weekend I did a 60 minute, but I did two 60 minutes in a row. So I guess he's just kind of dispersing the run. You know, I don't ask questions, you know, as a coach, you're trying to ask a question cause I want to understand it. And I remember one time he told me, he doesn't think he said it this meanly. It wasn't mean how he said it, but he basically was like, don't ask questions. You're not the coach now kind of, you know, let, yeah. let, let me determine what is happening and why, and you don't think you just need to do. And he was, he said it in a nice way. It wasn't like ugly, but you know, as a CrossFit coach, you know, and I write programming and I write programming for, you know, our teams that we work with and my cross country team, I'm always trying to think, well, what's this going to do? Why do we got to do this? Why do we have to do that? I like to know why, but he told me to quit asking why so I just do. These <laughs> well, I was just curious if you were doing like longer runs, like if you were leading up like, like, especially as it gets closer to the hundred, but it sounds like you're, you're signing up for races that are longer runs. So that's, you know, that's what that's, that's what that is. Run 50 miles without being at a race. That is just not nobody. (laughs) I'm going to have to probably do it though, because I cannot find May 18th. If you know of a 50 miler, I need to do a 50 mile race on May 18th. And there is not one except in California and Washington. You, know, you just have to travel. Um, uh, yeah. Find somewhere cold. No, not, da- not down I, here. <laughs> I don't want to go to the cold. Like y'all talk about going to that tunnel, tunnel hill stuff. Mm-mm. If that's cold, I don't want to do it. I want it to be 100 degrees outside. Like the Barkley. I didn't care. Really? I was happy that it was hot. Because wow. I like to train in the heat. It doesn't not bother me a bit. I'd rather have heat than cold any day. I don't know. I'm just made weird. I could live in Belize in a grass hut. <laughs> if I had a mosquito net, I'd be good. That's hilarious. Well, listen, I'm, I'm running out of time, but I have some, I have some, I have some things I want to get to. Okay. Um, uh, I, I like to talk about, I, I am 
I don't know how you do what you do with the enthusiasm that you do it. It's, it's truly <laughs> inspiring. So if you have any sort of tips, like to, that, what gets you through your day, that's great. But, but if there's anything, do you have any books or anything like that that you've read that you can suggest to people? Yes. Okay. Well, business books. I read business books. I'm such a, I stay up till like 11 o'clock at night, midnight and send my coaches stuff in the coach group of things that we're going to change in the business, or this is what we got to do. This is right, right. uh, the best business book that I have read that has changed my business has been one, uh, the pumpkin plan. Okay. Michael, Mac, I can't remember his name. And I don't even read him the whole, I don't even read the whole thing half the time. I just read like pieces of it. You get to that point where you're like, oh my gosh, I got to do this. And then you put it down. Yes. I, I get that. I, I have like six books on my nightstand right now. And I have two right here. That I'm still <laughs> um, and speaking of, this one is a good one. Extreme Ownership. Uh, okay. Great book. It's by this Navy SEAL, uh, Jocko Willink. And Lee yeah, Clark. yeah. I want to go to their seminar so bad, but it's like three thousand dollars because they mm. are just—they have some great stuff in here about taking ownership over every single thing that happens in your life. So it's applicable not just to business owners. I think it's great for just anybody who's trying to stop making excuses for themselves for why mm -hmm. they can't um, accomplish something and how to take ownership over their failures and mistakes and how to admit failure. Like you have to admit where does the fault lie? And, and even if you think that it wasn't your fault, there's something, especially if you're in a position of leadership, if something in this gym fails, well, you know, it might not have been my fault that that coach didn't turn the light out, but in the grand scheme of things, the buck stops here. And yes, it was my fault because maybe I didn't have a SOP in place. Maybe I didn't have something in place to make sure that they did what they were supposed to do. So right. that's a great book. Um, of course, Born to Run, one of my favorite um, like yeah. fiction. Yeah. Fiction is just like a, a story that doesn't really doesn't really help me in any professional way. I'm a person that I don't like to waste time on things that are non-essential, but those are books that are interesting. And I'm reading right now. I'm in a book club at the gym. Our gym has a book club. Okay. So in all my spare time, I, I like to read books and the best book I read, it was a children's book. It's the story of Edward Tulane. It made me cry. It's a children's book that made me cry. I highly recommend it. Um, and then the book I'm reading right now is called The Glass Castle. And it's about uh, okay. a really eccentric dad. It's a movie, too. I can't remember. If That's Woody what Harrelson. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think Woody Harrelson plays the dad. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's they try to keep their kids. Um, they're, like, always on the move and conspiracy theorists type the dad's just kind of like a slick talking swindler who's like narcissistic he's really high on himself about how great he is at everything and these kids had to grow up with their dad you know subjecting them to things like teaching you know which i don't want to get on this topic because i know you need to go to <laughs> but, like he taught them how to shoot he taught them how to to, to be productive humans in case the world went to crap mm -hmm. they can they can grow a garden they can take care of themselves you know if all of our technology and all of our modern conveniences went away they know how to fend for themselves so it, it's actually a pretty good book so that's a great fictional thing i'm not reading a lot of fiction though i like to read uh, non-fiction well perfect um here's what i want to do okay. after you run leadville yeah. I, want, I want i want to talk again blogs on the Barkley. Like anybody that's trying to do the yep. Barkley Fall Classic, I have so much information. Where do we go to find that stuff? Um, well, I have, it's Janice Marie Ferguson uh, blog spot. I'll, I'll find it and make sure I put a little yeah, thing. Well, yeah. well, you know, it's the blog. I started in 2010 and mm -hmm. I have like 200 unpublished blogs in there, believe it or not, that I haven't even like published because I have to have to be perfect before they come out. I really need to go through there one day and just publish all those blogs that I have on all these race recaps that I've done and I don't finish them anyway but yeah they can go read about the Barkley I still have one that I have to write the final one which is the chimney top trail right so, yeah. okay so, but there's a lot of information about how the race happens for people in that one if they're going to run it they need to read it because it even goes through like hotels everything perfect um yes so good luck Thank you. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how Leadville goes. And I'm gonna schedule. I'm gonna go ahead and schedule another podcast for after Leadville, so Love we can it. talk about that. I need to schedule a podcast with you, so I can learn how to podcast. 
I would love to do that. I, I, I need to know how to do this. This would be so much fun. You are, <laughs> you're, you would be way better at it than I am. I promise. <laughs> you're so. No, because you're good at it because you let me talk because I'm the guest. I would be terrible. I would try to talk the whole time. So you don't. You, you just don't need any guests. You just need to talk. <laughs> no, I do need to. I do like to hear people's stories, and I don't know enough of your story, Vaughn. I need to know more of your story. Well, when you start your podcast, I'll come on and tell okay. tell all. Okay, good. Yes, it's a tell all. Vaughn right. all tells all. Oh, right. I like that. <laughs> well, listen, I really appreciate you talking to me. Okay. Anytime, Vaughn. And. Okay, I'm out with you up there yes and and same here okay anytime all right